province uh, before. And he's here once again. Pastor Burgess, come on down. Everybody give him a round of applause. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's such a great joy and privilege to meet you this afternoon, soon after another Indian fellowship. And uh, thank God for Pastor Ronald and uh, Sister Kelly, all the pastor team here. It's good to see all the beautiful faces here. Thank God for my hosty family who is walking me. And uh, <clears throat> I really believe that God has something special, specific, special for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. After a few years, I'm back to this house. Thank you for your prayers for Ascension Ministries International, our church back in Hyderabad, my family, and uh, we've been really blessed. And uh, God is doing amazing things through our life and through our ministry, taking us across the globe, preaching the gospel. And God is showing wonders and miracles that God is doing these days to our humble lives. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's close our eyes and look at God for a moment. Father, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful time, for this divine appointed time, for this time that, God, you're going to release your mercy, your presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Your limitless presence Amen. for thy people, Lord. Amen. Thank you for your favor, for your majesty, Amen. for your Shekinah glory Amen. in our midst this afternoon. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You are our everything, Lord. Amen. We trust in you. Amen. We bring glory and honor. Amen. Use your servant Amen. to speak your word and boldness. Let your word that comes out, Father, bring deliverance, peace, healing, and transformations in every area of the people's life, God. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Give a clap of to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's turn our attention to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 42, and uh, another scripture, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 14, chapter 4, verse 19 and 20. So first we're going to read chapter Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 42, and Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 19 and 20. Praise God. Just want to read for you. Listen carefully. He brought him to Jesus. He means the first he is Andrew. The second him is Peter. Simon. Andrew brought Simon, his brother, to Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus looked at Simon and said, You are Simon, the son of John. But you shall be Cephas, that word Peter. Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, verse 19 says, When Jesus saw Simon Peter and his brother, Jesus said to him, said to Simon, Follow me, I will make you the fishers of man. All of a sudden, suddenly, by the says, they left the boat and the net and followed Jesus Christ. When the call came, there was a sudden response to the call of God. And they responded quickly. And that response became a great blessing in their lives. The first scripture that we read, when Andrew brought Simon to Jesus Christ, before Simon was introducing himself to Jesus, Jesus telling Simon, I know you. Don't know how to say your name. I know you are Simon. I know your father's name is John. In some other translations say it's Jonah. I know your name. I don't, I don't want you to tell me your name. I don't want you to tell me your father's name. I know who you are. You are Simon. 
and your father's name is John. But I want to reveal a new identity, a new name to you. You shall be called Cephas. In other words, you shall be called Peter. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Peter or Cephas is not the other word for Simon anyway. It is a name completely given by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In other words, in the sight of other people, you are Simon, you are fisherman Simon, you are an ordinary fisherman Simon. You are not that much respected in your community. <coughs> Praise God. In other people's sight, you are Simon. Praise the Lord. But in my sight, you will be Peter. You will be Cephas. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. No word. Jesus was trying to say, I'm going to change your status. I'm going to change your identity. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. According to your own people, your own community, your own society. Praise the Lord. You are Simon. But according to God's greater plan on your life, which even you don't know about. Hallelujah. According to God's plan and God's greater call on you. You will be a Peter. You will be a man who will stand for the Lord. You will be a man who will stand in boldness and preach the word. You will be a man when you preach three thousands of people will be saved at a time. You will be a man you will attract the audience. And you will be a man doing great and magnificent things for the kingdom. Amen. You are Simon, a weak person, an ordinary person, not a spectator. You are a fisherman by profession. You have a wealthy lifestyle. But I call you Peter. I call you Cephas. When I bring this word before you this afternoon time, God has a different, I mean, God has a higher call. God has a higher identity for you. And that you don't know even today. And God has a greater plan on your life. God wants you to enter into the godly project. Hallelujah. Amen. Simon was the project of Simon's father, John. Simon's father, John, gave him the name Simon. Simon didn't put his name Simon anyway. Simon's father, John, put his name Simon. Hallelujah. But God wanted to, I mean, God wanted to, uh, hallelujah, remind him or hallelujah. God wanted to tell Simon, when your father gave him Simon, that Simon became a fisherman and Simon became an ordinary man. God wanted to let him know that your heavenly father is calling you Peter. That Peter is not just like the ordinary Simon. That Peter is not the fisher, I mean, the, 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 just a fisherman. He will be the fishers of man and he will be a great apostle and he will be a great, great disciple. He will be a great servant of God. God has a godly project on your life. Hallelujah. When Simon's father, when Simon is, the name Simon is his own father's project. But Peter is God's project. God's project. And God called Jeremiah. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5, God said to Jeremiah, before even you are formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And before you came out of your mother's womb, I sat sanctified you. I consecrated you to be the prophet of the kingdoms. Hallelujah. To be my mouthpiece. To be my spokesperson. To be my voice in the kingdom. Hallelujah. God says, uh, I mean, the, the other way, God wanted Jeremiah to know a person God discovered in him. Hallelujah. When Jeremiah is born, hallelujah, Oh, Jeremiah didn't know that he is a prophet. His own parents, they don't know that he is like going to be a prophet. Only God knew Jeremiah will be a prophet. In the same way, even though Simon is a fisherman, God has a Peter project in Simon's life. God had a, I mean, Cephas project 
in Simon's life. Hallelujah. I don't know what is your identity right now in your society. I don't know what is the situation you are going through. What level people respect you. I mean, what level people regard you. I don't know what kind of education you have. But I just want to let you know that when God's amazing call is still active on your life. Maybe you don't know about the higher purpose and higher call of God. But I just want to tell to Anningerhal Fellowship Church, Full Gospel Church. I just want to tell you that God's amazing call that has for you is still active. Hallelujah. God hasn't done with you yet. And God's call is still active. And God wants to use you in a powerful way. Hallelujah. Powerful way. God said to be a Simon. Hallelujah. Simon, follow me. I will make you a fisher of man. It's not that you will become a fisher of man, but I will make you a fisher of man. Hallelujah. It's not that you will become an evangelist, you will become a prophet, you will become a pastor, you will become an international preacher, you will become a manager, you will become a businessman. It's not that, it's not that. Hallelujah. If you're ready to follow me, if you understand that my language saying follow me, follow me is a God's package for you, for your family, for your generation. Hallelujah. You don't know what comes with that package. When God God says, follow me. God has amazing, miraculous, supernatural, that no eye has seen. Hallelujah. God has specific plan for you. Hallelujah. God says, follow me. When you, when you learn to follow me, I will make you fisher of man. I will make you a great apostle. I will make you a great evangelist. I will make you a great pastor. Hallelujah. I just want to prophesy over you, over this community. If you are ready to follow Christ in every step, every areas of your life, if you are ready to learn how to follow God, God wants to tell you, I am ready. I am ready to make you the person I want. I am ready to release my anointing on you. I am ready to give you a new identity. I am going to tell you, ready to take you to the next level. You are all people will say you are good for nothing and you are a useless person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you, you also have a thinking that you are nobody. You cannot become anyone. Hallelujah. Maybe you are a rejected case. You are an ignored case. But the Lord says if you are ready even today, even still if you are ready to follow me, maybe you are rejected, disrespected, forsaken, broken pieces, but still God's hand is powerful to mold you, to build you, to bless you, to lift you up. To take you to the level God wants you to be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Simon is a human call, human project. But Peter is God's call. Jesus said, You will be called as Peter. But for Peter, Simon to become Peter, Simon to become Peter, I repeat, the ordinary Simon. To become a greater apostle Peter. An ordinary fisherman Simon. To become a Peter who does extraordinary things for God. is a long way. It's a long process. Praise the Lord. God has called every one of you. Hallelujah. From very ordinary situations. To meet with this extraordinary God. To experience the extraordinary anointing. To do the extraordinary ministry. Amen. Praise God. Praise you are very ordinary person in front of your own people's eyes. But God says when my extraordinary power is released on your life. Hallelujah. You are sharing my extraordinary ministry. Where you think that. The walk you walk, the way you minister, the way you pray, the way you preach, everything going to change because you have received the extraordinary power from God. As an ordinary person, you were a zero in the sight of God. But number one, God, when he stood with you, I mean, you are now a valuable person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
that for this be Simon to become Peter. Simon to become Peter. Simon has to become Peter. Simon to become Peter. It's a hard work. It's a, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. The Simon to become Peter. The Simon to become Peter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may not have proper education, you may not have proper knowledge of the word of God. You may be the first person coming in the church. Hallelujah. You may be the least, the least person that doesn't know anything about or you don't have a proper salary, financial blessing. But the Lord says, your ordinary situation, the identity you have, I'm ready to change into a godly identity. Into a, into, into a person that everyone respect. Into a person who will be used by God in a powerful way. But for Simon to become Peter, that is our message. God's call upon Simon's life is Peter. You have to be a Peter. Because the call of God is that you will be Peter. You are Simon now, but you will be Peter. Hallelujah. But the Simon was many times fighting against the Peter of his life. Because Peter is the call of God. Peter is the identity of God. Peter is the project of God. Simon is the ordinary lifestyle. Simon is the fleshly lifestyle. Simon is his noble status. Ordinary status. Hallelujah. So this ordinary Simon to become a mighty man of Peter it was a difficult, difficult journey. Hallelujah. Many times this Simon fought with Peter. Or this Simon doesn't want the Peter to be revealed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Simon doesn't want Peter. Simon wants Simon. Hallelujah. But God has a greater plan and call on you. Our flesh, our ordinary status, our own thinking, our own ideas. Hallelujah. Our own lifestyle doesn't allow. The worldly things, the God of this world, some kind of bad characters that are still in our life, doesn't allow that call of God, that identity of God, that greater ministry of God, hallelujah, to be released through your life. Hallelujah. So today, as we meditate, some of the points where Bible, specifically gospel, shows us some of the incidents where Simon was really against Peter call of God. Hallelujah. Number one. Number one. Gospel of Matthew. Number one. Gospel of Matthew. Hallelujah. Now God gave me this word. I don't have a notes or anything. I have to just go through the. Hallelujah. As you know my language is Malayalam. I'm, I'm a Malayali. Hallelujah. At a time we have to speak in different languages. So sometimes you may not understand my Indian English. But still Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm trying best. I'm trying best. I just came from India just uh, three days before. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Gospel of Matthew chapter 14. 14. Hallelujah. Verses 28. You know the story. I, I'm not going to elaborate everything there. You know the incident. 28 says that Peter said, Jesus, Jesus walking on the water. Peter said, Jesus, if it's you, let me come on the water. Let me walk and come to you on the water. See, what's that happening there? Actually, the ordinary Simon is going to behave like an extraordinary Peter there because Peter is a mighty man of God. Peter is a higher call of God. Ordinary Simon cannot walk on water. You know how to swim. You know how to fish. But he, don't, he, doesn't, he doesn't know how to walk. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus walked on the water. But now Simon says, now Peter says, if it's you, Jesus, let me come on water. Let me come and walk on the water and come to you. Jesus said, come on. You know all the, all the story. Jesus said, come on. Simon was walking on the water all of a sudden, seeing the wind. Seeing the wind, he became frightened and began to sink in the water. Many people say, why he wanted to see the wind? 
why he uh, took his uh, eyes away from Jesus? Of course, when we, when we travel, you know, we will look yeah. left side or right side. It's a common thing, it's an ordinary thing. The Bible says the problem was not seeing the wind. The problem was he got frightened. Praise the Lord. That's what the Bible says. The problem was not seeing the wind actually. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The problem was why the clearly mentions he became frightened. Hallelujah. That crippling fear caught him. And then he began to think, I can't fulfill my call. I can't move on. I can't take a further step. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He forgot the power of God. All of a sudden, he forgot the call of God. Hallelujah. Jesus had come to me on the water. But because of the fear he had, because of the fear he had, because he was caught by fear, the fear didn't allow him to continue. Rather, he was sinking in the water. The same way when you're called by God, sometimes, I mean, there's a spirit of fear, crippling fear, targeting you, trying to destroy you, trying to discourage you, disrupt you. Hallelujah. I mean, fear for people, fear of people, fear of so many things. Hallelujah. Other than the fear of God, when so many demonic fears and worldly fears and human fears, when it target you, when it catch you, you are not able to do the things because of some people you are not able to progress because of certain unnecessary fear the seed of fear that the enemy is sowing in your mind some kind of fear that your mind is captured by you are not able to become the person God wants you to be hallelujah, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I stand against every crippling fear of the enemy. Hallelujah. Every kind of fears and anxieties and other thoughts that takes away your faith and attacks your faith and I mean, hallelujah, I mean uh, drag you away from the call of God. Every fears Hallelujah. That stand against the blessings of God. That stand against the call of God. Every human fears. Every worldly fears. Every fears that I mean, uh, stand against the godly purpose. Let's go away from your life. Right now I rebuke every fear in Jesus mighty name. Every fear be removed out of your life. Every fear of judgment. Every fear of punishment. Every fear of hallelujah. Some kind of penalty. Every fear of accident. Every fear of death. Every fear of sickness. Every fear of marriage brokenness. Every fear hallelujah of something negative coming to your life. Every fear imagining something that is something going to happen in your life hallelujah I just want to tell you I mean you are not supposed to keep the fear in your life and say something going to happen no 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 instead of fear instead of fear I pray that faith works in your life Amen. when faith comes to you fear will automatically be disappeared from your life in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name all of a sudden Peter was caught by fear he was frightened when he was frightened he couldn't move on further move on further move on further move on further hallelujah if you are if God has called you with a higher purpose to be his witness to be his voice to be the sound of the Holy Spirit, to stand before thousands, to be a mighty witness. Many, many fear factors may come your way. Hallelujah. But you will say, I will fear no evil. As David says, even the thousands of enemies may encamp around me, but I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. Because God is my light and my salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you stand with God's word, when you stand with God's word, when you stand before people, many fear factors will come to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is on my side. Hallelujah. And God is my light and salvation. No fear things. Hallelujah can touch my life. In other way, if God has called me to be a Peter, that Peter call is still active. Jesus said, Come to me, come to me, come to me. If Jesus has called me, he knows how to handle 
in my case. Hallelujah. Even though Peter was sitting in the water, the hand of the Lord is still working behind Peter. Hallelujah. Peter, you are not a fail, failure. You are not a failure project. You are not a failed project. God wanted to remind him, even though you are sinking in the water, got frightened, still my hand is powerful to raise you up on the same water where you were sinking. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you, hallelujah. How even though you've gone through impossible situations, no one there to help you. Everybody is staying away from you. The people who sad, they will be with you, they will leave you. Hallelujah. But the Lord says, my grace hand, my hand, my hand of grace is still working for you. The project not completed. The project not completed. The project not completed. God knows your fear. God knows your fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second thing, second thing. Hallelujah. When you come to chapter 16 of Gospel of Matthew, so the first thing that stood against the Peter call was fear. Fear. Fear captured him in many ways. He was singing. The hand of the Lord was still working for him. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you one more thing. If God has a higher call, Peter has a higher call in Simon's life. If God has that kind of higher call upon your life, hallelujah. Even though no one is there in this world to support you, stand with you, help you out. Everyone may speak against you, bring rumors about you. But if your church is on a higher call of God, Hallelujah. If Anangari Huffle Gospel Church is on a higher call of God, whatever kind of, I mean, weapons the enemy may design against you, Hallelujah. Things will look like everything going out of control. You may say, I can't deal it anymore. I can't handle it anymore. Everything is going out of control in your life. I tried my level best to control, but I cannot deal with it anymore. But the Lord says, hallelujah. But the Lord says, when I have my higher call on your life, it's not your power, it's not your might, it's not your, I mean, education is not your position, but my hand, my hand is not shortened. My hand is powerful. My hand is helping. My hand is mighty to pull you out of the problem. I believe today God has prepared something special for some people to bring them out of some kinds of trouble. Hallelujah. The gracious hand of the Lord is released here for some for some kind of people who are going through some kind of trouble. Hallelujah. They say, I don't know how to handle the problem. I don't know how to come out of this problem. But the Lord says, my hand is stretched towards you. My hand is stretched towards you to bring you out of the problem. It's not your hand. It's my hand. Bring you out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Problem of sin, problem of curse, problem of demonic curses, demonic bondages, problem of roommates, a problem of family problems, problem of unforgiveness, problem of split and divisions. You don't know how to handle the problem. Everything became a messy situation. But the Lord said, I can find a solution. My gracious hand will be stretched out to you and bring you out of every problem and make you stand victoriously. Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. 16. Hallelujah. Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. Verse 21 and 22. 21 and 22. You know, Jesus was speaking about, prophesying about, speaking about what going to happen in the near future. In Jesus' life. For example, Jesus was speaking about his crucifixion and all the suffering he is going to face, he is going to go through. Immediately, what was Peter's response? Verse 22. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Not the word, he rebuked Jesus. Began to rebuke him, saying, 
God forbid it. Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but man's. The last verse is very important. For you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but on men. But you are not setting your mind on God's interest on men, but on man. Hallelujah. Here you know a few verses before. This Peter was appreciated by Jesus Christ for the revelation that he gave. You know that, right? Hallelujah. And everyone said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. About Jesus, different, different opinion. He is a Jeremiah, he is Elijah, and uh, John the Baptist, and different, different opinions. Uh, the question came to Peter, and Peter said, You are the son of the living God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, uh, Jesus appreciated him and said, It's not revealed by flesh and blood. Or that other, other way, it's not an information given to you. But it's a revelation came from heaven, from heavenly father. So he was appreciated. Not only that, Jesus said to him, I'm giving you the key of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind, personally Jesus speaking to Peter there, whatever you bind on this year, shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on this earth will be loosed in heaven. But the same Peter was used by devil for some time. The same Peter was given the authority to stop and to open, to bind and to loose. Jesus gave him the authority. Soon after, the same Peter started speaking against the will of God. Peter said to Jesus, whatever you are talking about, your crucifixion, death and all, it shouldn't happen. I won't let it happen. I won't let it happen. Actually, devil was clearly speaking through Peter because that is devil doesn't want Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary. But the same Peter was given the authority to bind and to loose. That means if he say no, that is no in heaven. If he say yes, if he say cancel, it will be canceled. That's what Jesus said. Whatever you bind, should not be bound. The same Peter, when he says something with his uh, tongue, which has authority, it really bodies the kingdom. Hallelujah. The same Peter said, no, I won't let that happen. And not only that, he rebuked Jesus. He rebuked Jesus. He rebuked Jesus. He didn't want Jesus to die. He didn't want Jesus to suffer for the death. He didn't want Jesus to die on the cross. Hallelujah. He said, no, I won't let it happen. But immediately Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Jesus directly, I mean, rebuked Satan there. And then came to Peter and said, your problem you are setting your mind mostly on human interest, not on godly things. Even though you are a man of authority, even though you are a Peter, even though you are a mighty man who received just now my authority to bind the loose, you have a problem. You set your mind most of the time on human things, on the fleshly things not on godly things. I will say is hallelujah. I mean the fleshly ideas. The thought of flesh is enmity with God. The thought of flesh is enmity with the thought of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Even though you are walking with Jesus for I mean hundred years, Jesus won't change his mindset like your mind. Hallelujah. But rather Jesus expect when you follow Christ, you will adopt or you will be changed like Jesus thinks. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The thought of heaven is not the thought of heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Your fleshly thought is not the thought of God. Praise the Lord. But rather God wants the heavenly thought. Hallelujah. To be your thought. God wants the thought of heaven to be the thought of heaven. Hallelujah. God doesn't want your thought to fulfill your life like that. That's why God says, 
Look of Isaiah chapter 55. Hallelujah. God says, my thoughts are not in your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, says the Lord. As the heaven is higher than the earth, my thoughts and my ways are higher than your thoughts and your ways, says the Lord. God says, you have thoughts, but I also have thoughts. You have heavenly thoughts, I have heavenly thoughts. You have lower thoughts, I have higher thoughts. You have freshly thoughts, hallelujah. But my thoughts are so great and so big, hallelujah. No one knows what is the distance between heaven and earth even today, hallelujah. When you stand on your earth, you have earthly thoughts. When something happens in your life, I mean, you have earthly thoughts. You judge your future seeing all the situation around you, hallelujah. But the Lord says, when problems come against you, I have my heavenly thoughts for you, I have plans for you. My higher plans is not revealed to you yet, but it will be revealed to you. Praise the Lord. So we need the vision, not just the sight. Hallelujah. Sight says how many people around you. Sight says who are the people talking against you. You cannot judge your future. You cannot judge your destiny. You cannot judge your life by your sight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But faith always looks into the vision, into the highest. Hallelujah. You have the sight, but you need the vision. Praise the Lord. Sight says what you see around. Sight says what is already around you. But vision says what will, what will, what God will, what God going to do, what God going to release. Sight says so oh, many few people. Hallelujah. Sight says nothing going to happen. My five cents will work with the sight I see. My five cents in my body will work with the sight I see and say, no way, no solution. My five cents will look unto me, my sickness and say, there is no solution, no cure. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By sight, by sight, my five senses even says, you cannot become that person. That problem is not solved at all. It won't be solved at all. But the Lord says, beyond our senses, faith to work. Faith looks unto the vision. Faith looks unto the highest. And the Lord says, even though you are sensing, there is no solution. But God say, I will show you my salvation. Hallelujah. When the saints say there is no remedy, there is no cure for your sickness. When your five senses say there is no way out, there is no way for breakthrough. But the Lord say, hallelujah, I will show you my salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your human sight says there is no way of help. Your human sight says uh, there is no way for growth. Your human sight says uh, there is no way for any kind of development. But the Lord says, if you believe me, I will show you my salvation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Here Peter set his mind mostly on human ideas. Hallelujah. Many times the firstly ideas when it works in our churches, problems take place. But when the heaven take control, when the Lord, when the Holy Spirit take control of our situations, everything will be easy for you. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's very difficult. You say it's so difficult to handle this kind of people. It's so difficult to handle this problem. But if you are ready to give everything to Holy Ghost, hallelujah, everything God will make easy for you. Hallelujah. When God is taking control of certain situation, you don't feel like it's difficult for you. Praise the Lord. Every difficulty is God will take away every difficulty. He will take over the situation. He will control the situation. When everything is given to God, God is in control. Hallelujah. When some people will ask you thousands of different questions against about your life, about your church, say one answer. God is in control. God is in control. God is in control. Hallelujah. Many people have uh, different suggestions, different questions and they expect from you different types of answers. You don't say, I think, I feel. 
Hallelujah. Somebody said, don't, don't use that kind of word. Hallelujah. I think so. I feel so. Hallelujah. I want to say, no, 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 no. No, no, no. That is from the flesh. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. When the Holy Spirit is in control, you won't say that I think so. You won't say I feel so. I want to say, no, no, no. Hallelujah. You will say, even though my family is going through turmoil, problem, unexpressible pain. Hallelujah. When everyone is standing against you, people are waiting on you to see your downfall. But you will say, I have given everything to God Almighty. So one thing I know, my God is in control. My God is in control. My God is in control. Control of your church, control of your family, control of your children, control of your husband, control of your relationship, control of every situation of your life. There is nothing in your life that God can't control. Hallelujah. Say, enemy, enemy, you don't have any right on me. You cannot play with me anymore. I'm not a puppet of you. Anymore to be played by you. Hallelujah. I am the child of the most, I'm almighty. God. I'm the child of the most high God. I'm not a fleshly piece of meat. Hallelujah. I am the redeemed one. I'm the chosen one. I am the VIP of this great God. I'm so precious in the very sight of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has a higher plan on me. I may say with me, God has a higher plan on me. God has a higher plan on me. But remember, the Simon is working still against Peter. That's what Jesus said. Your Simon is really more hallelujah, actively working in you than Peter. Your Simon, that means your mind, you are setting mostly on human things, not on godly things. Hallelujah. 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 The third one, I'm going to the third one. You know I'm a long preacher, I'm going to make short. Hallelujah. <laughs> Third one. I love to preach. I don't want to say a story when I come with God's word. There are many things to be revealed. I love Rema. I love fresh meat from the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I mean, the first one was fear. Simon brought fear. Fear belongs to Simon. Fear, fear doesn't belong to Peter. Peter is a bodily apostle. He is a bold apostle. He can stand before anyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The second thing is uh, setting mindset on human things. <coughs> Number three, chapter 19, <coughs> chapter 19, <coughs> verse 27. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 27. Peter said, you know, Peter was a spokesperson for another 11 disciples many times. You know, he was very much bold, talkative. He would talk on anyone, anyone's face. So, other 11 disciples used him to speak this thing, ask this question to Jesus. We left everything for you, Lord, and followed you. What we get? What will be our future? Praise the Lord. There was a discussion among them about their needs, personal needs, family needs. Peter has a higher call of God. But this Peter is asking a question, we left everything. What are we going to receive from you? What are we going to get? What kind of blessing? How our children? How our wife will survive? How my family will survive? We left everything for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Question of anxiety. Unnecessary anxiety for the future. Praise the Lord. When God has a higher call on you, unnecessary anxiety, concern, devil will try to bring into your life. So your Simon will rise up with this anxiety question. I mean, against Peter. Peter is completely the grace from God, the call from God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Peter really needs God's anointing. Peter doesn't need human resources, actually. Peter needs the outpouring power of the Holy Spirit. Peter needs something from heaven to become the Peter. But the earthly things is really bothering Peter. Earthly things and concerns and anxieties really trying to stop Simon becoming the Peter. Hallelujah. Unnecessary anxiety. When God called you, specifically people who are in the service of the Lord, specifically those who committed their life to do God's work, I want to tell you when God has a call upon your life, 
many, many, many kind of anxiety concerns from people's questions and family situations and whatever you see and whatever you think will come against you. Remember, this kind of anxiety and concern is really targeting the real call of God in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I mean, brother, you trust God. Even though Peter, he was immature that time when he questioned this question to Jesus. When he became a mature apostle, when he write a apostle, I mean, book of Epistle, first Peter, Epistle, the same Peter saying to the church, Hallelujah. Book of First Peter chapter 5, 7. Hallelujah. Cast all your burden to Jesus. Cast all your burden to him because he cares for you. The same Peter years before asked Jesus, he left everything. But he get the same Peter after he became a mature disciple. He is comforting, he is motivating, he is encouraging the church. Cast all your problem, burden to Jesus, because he will care for you. He will care for you. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you whatever concerns you, he is ready to accomplish it. According to the book of Psalms 138, verse 18, whatever concerns you, God is able to accomplish it. Hallelujah. Whatever concerns you have, whatever worries you have, whatever issues you have, Whatever emptiness you have, hallelujah, whatever need you have, I mean, God knows that clearly, more than you think and imagine, my God is an able God to provide for you. God is doing something there in heaven, so to surprise you in the coming days. Prophetically, I want to say, God is preparing something in heaven for you to give you a surprise. An English helpful gospel church. This is a prophetical word I, I pronounce on you. God has a surprising package for you. God has a surprising work for you. My God is about to release a new news for you. That is not to discourage you. That is not to put you down. But to lift you up. Hallelujah. But to bring you up. Motivate you. Encourage you. God is doing something great. He is doing something great. Unnecessary anxieties, hallelujah, and concerns. Number one was fear. Simon's fear was against Peter's call. The call of Peter, call for Peter. Number two, setting the mindset on the fleshly things rather than God. Number three, unnecessary anxieties and worries and concerns. Number four, number four. Gospel of Luke chapter 22. Come on, quickly. Gospel of Luke chapter 22. Lord, show me the scripture. Gospel of Luke chapter 22. Now I have a Malayal of an English Bible. Sometimes very complicated. It's a dual language Bible. You know, I'm ready with any time. This is my mother tongue, so I can't forget it. Hallelujah. I'm a fighting Malayalam preacher too. Hallelujah. So I love to speak in Maria. All the time. So sometimes when I look for English scripture, uh, mistakenly I will look for Maria. So, <laughs> hallelujah. See, if I say something Maria, I'm in between. So, for, I mean, forgive me, okay? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have mercy on me. Praise God. Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verse 31. Verse 31. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission for me to sift you like your feet. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And you once again turn again to strengthen your brother. It's a very familiar scripture. Sh Simon, Simon, Satan asked me permission to sift you, not to shift you. But to sift you. Hallelujah. In our villages and all all the time, our mothers used to sift, sift this rice and, you know, wheat. I mean, there is kind of process. First sift and second sift and third sift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When, when the rice or the wheat is sifted, we can say it's just rolling like that. Hallelujah. Spinning like that. Amen. The same way, devil wondered you to be sifted. Devil wondered your mind to be sifted. Never wonder you to be upset in your mind. You to be stuck in your mind. 
devil wanted to play with your mind. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Devil wanted to make you unstable. Devil wanted to really bring struggles in your mind. A lot of mind problems. A lot of mind war. Devil wanted to sift you. That sifting will cause you to backslide. That's why Jesus using this to wear. Once you turn back, once you turn back, I pray for you, not for sifting. God allowed the devil to sift him anyway. But I pray that your faith may not fail. That's where some people say, I've heard many times. They will ask me permission to sift you, but I didn't allow. No, 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 not like that. They will ask me permission to sift you, but I pray for you so that your faith may not fail. Once you come back, once you turn back, strengthen your brothers. When your mind is sifted, when you are sifted, you are not able to motivate your brother and sister. You are not able to strengthen your brother and sister. Why our church brothers and sisters not able to encourage others? Motivate others, exhort others, hallelujah, lift someone up, hallelujah. Why our brothers and sisters speaking ill about others? I mean, unhealthy talk about others, because they are bachelor. If they are turned back and stand with God, they have the love for God. Hallelujah. When they have the real love for God, if something happened to your own brother and sister, that love will protect that brother and sister. Not to infect that sister and brother. Hallelujah. What we try to do, oh, we spread the news around. Hallelujah. We make sure that brother and sister is no more. Hallelujah. When you neglect someone, you are letting that person to be infected. The neglection, the neglection will cause infection. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here, Peter's God, Jesus saying, they will ask me permission to send you, send you. Send you, send you, send you. They will, will use your mind to bring a lot of struggles in your mind. Different kinds of war. Different kinds of demonic war, mind war, flesh war, lot of things. They will, will take away your peace. They will doesn't want you to pray. You are called by God, you have a higher call from God, but they will have a target, they will have a target on Peter's life to sift him. The same way when you are into the highest, highest stand with God, when you are into that very edge, I mean level with God, hallelujah. I mean the highest level with God. Devil brings another target, devil brings another another cunning work in your life to sift you. I mean to distract you. I mean to, to trying to bring lot of kinds of different kind of care situation in your mind. Hallelujah. Your mind is not fixed. Your mind is troubled. Your mind is unstable. Hallelujah. You are not able to, I mean, find the solution. I mean, the thing is that when your mind is like that, devil is using that situation to turn away from the Lord. Jesus said, you will go away from me. You will, back, you will be back to them. But when you turn back, strengthen your brother. If you are turned back to God, if you are restored back with Jesus Christ, then you will be a brother and sister who will strengthen other brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are backslidden, even though coming to church, calling a vessel Christian, this will be the result. Whether you are backslidden or you are restored back. If you are backslidden or gone away from the Lord, you will be the first person speaking ill about a brother and sister. You will be the first person bringing a judgment on a brother and sister. You cannot strengthen your brother. You don't know how to motivate your brother. You know how to kill a brother. You know how to destroy somebody. You know how to bring infection into someone's life. You know how to really make someone, I mean, how do you feel now? You know how to discourage and distract someone, but you don't know how to build someone's life. You know how to lift someone's up, how to motivate some person, some people in the church, some people in the society, waiting for a word of motivation. Hallelujah. Waiting for a word of encouragement. You don't have to be a spiritually anointed. You don't have to be a person with the gift of healing and prophecy. At least a word of motivation. Say God has a plan on you, my brother.
brother. God has a plan. Even though you have even rejected you. My God hasn't done with you yet. And God has an amazing plan on you. I pray every brothers and sisters of this Anangraha. Hallelujah. Will be a strengthening community, motivating community, appreciating community that every infecting agents of the enemy disappear from our church, from our community. Every rumoring agents, infecting agents, defiling agents, polluting agents of the enemy come out in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus, every polluting works of the enemy, every defiling works of the enemy, every infecting work of the enemy, I mean, be disappeared from our church, from our families, from our community, from the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. 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 One more thing I just want to say. We don't have time to go more. One more point, and I want to conclude and pray. Mr. Carroll called me 40 minutes preaching and 20 minutes prayer. Hallelujah. At least 10 minutes I can get from prayer and I'll be happy. I know it's not a crusade, it's a Sunday service, so I'll be quick. I have to go, I'm very happy than you. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Glory to God. The last one, same chapter 22, Gospel of Luke. There are many other points to show you. The Simon inside the Peter. But for today, the last one. The last one. <coughs> Hallelujah. Bible says, chapter 22, Gospel of Luke. Hallelujah. Verses 48 on verse. When the Roman soldiers came to catch Jesus Christ, the Garden of Gethsemane, Bible says, uh, There was a riot, there was a chaos. Actually, the devil used Peter again there. And he said, Simon, to take his sword, to start a fight. Hallelujah. When they came to catch Jesus, and immediately what Peter did, Peter wanted to start a fight, a war, a people war. He took his sword, he struck the high priest's servant or high priest way and cut his right ear, right ear. <clears throat> Immediately Jesus rebuked Peter and anyway healed him. But the purpose, the devil's purpose was not to send Jesus to the cross, but to make a big fight inside God of Gethsemane, hallelujah, and stand against the very plan of Almighty God. All of a sudden, Jesus calmed the situation. Solved the situation. Jesus calmed that situation. <coughs> Bringing a healing. Bringing a healing. When some unexpected trouble or fight or split or division or issue or rumor or something happened in your life, don't try, don't try to take <coughs> your trustly weapons. Because the devil wanted a war, a fight inside the church. Inside the church. God has a higher plan over your life. God has a higher plan. God has a higher plan about Jesus to go to the cross. That is the will of God. When God has a higher plan, higher purpose on this church, the devil will bring situations where we can fight together. Where people will fight and wage war. Speak against. Jesus calm the situation. Jesus calm the situation. Calm the situation. When that type of problem comes, say to that brother and sister, if you want to go right, I will go left. Thank you very much. If you want to go left, I will go right, same like Abraham said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Amen Walgi is one of my friends back in Bangalore City. Pastor of a higher church told me a heartbreaking story. He said, when he got 6,000 people in the church, there was a big time split. 3,000 people left the church. 
He cried. He was almost having heart attack. Now 3,000 people all of a sudden leaving church. Hallelujah. He said, I couldn't sleep. I was crying. When he was fasting and praying, God said, Hey, Burgis. You say it's a split, right? That is not a split, actually. It is my sanctification work. If you expect, accept that, I have a plan. I have another plan for you. Actually, when that something split happened, he was crying, he couldn't accept it. He said, no, I don't want this ministry. I can't. God said, in front of people is a split or it's a division. But in front of me is a sanctification process. I was sanctifying the church. You know, after a few years, the same pastor even worked his church was filled with the 16,000 people miraculously. Wow. Hallelujah. You know the amazing work of God. When something happens, the world calls different names. But the Lord thinks in a different way. Hallelujah. No one belongs to you. Everyone belongs to Jesus Christ. And God knows how to bless you and how to lead you, how to guide you. God knows how to open a way, how to shut a way. Hallelujah. You don't have to help God in some things. Rather trust in God. Don't try to trace God. But rather trust in God. He always has his best plan for you and me. Hallelujah. People may talk and against you, he may, they may talk anything against any kind of word, but try to do one thing, when people talk like that you do just one thing when people talk like that you just do one thing ignore that word ignore them, hallelujah when people talk against you when people talk against the plan of God when people talk against the promises of God in you, when people bring rumors against you, don't try to listen that. Rather ignore and say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You cannot listen to that and listen to God at that time. You cannot tune your, your ears to that thing and this thing at that time. Either to God or to the world. Either to God or to the voice of the people or to the voice of God. But I will say, whatever problem may come against me, hallelujah, but I will be tuned to one and only voice that is the voice of God. Hallelujah. When the tempest comes against you, when the world will hit against me, oh, when everything comes out of my control, but still I will speak in the angelic language. Still I will speak with my God. Still I will speak in tongues and I will rejoice in the presence of the almighty God. Hallelujah. When you are on people will say, your daughter is going to die. Or your daughter is, I mean, your daughter's life is going to be an end. Some problem is happening. I have seen, I have seen that and this. I mean, this is what is going to happen. But you will say, God is in control. Hallelujah. I don't have time to listen to your lies or devil. I don't have time to listen to your lies, your rumors, your negative words. My time is so precious, so I will listen to my almighty God. Thank you, Lord. The problem comes. What, how you will react? That really matters. The problem comes. How you will react? That matters. That matters. Hallelujah. 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 When you read the Gospel of John 21 chapter, the same Peter said, other disciple, I'm going back to fishing. You guys want to come with me? Bible says, Gospel of Matthew 4, 19 and 20, all of a sudden he left the boat and left and followed Jesus to become Peter. The same Peter is saying now, I don't feel like going and going on I me mean forward. I want to do the old job. You guys want to come with me. That means the Peter really wanted to live like a Simon. He doesn't want to be the Peter. God brought him thus far. The last chapter, Gospel of John, verse 3. 
He is saying, I'm going back to fishing. And the disciple asking, he's asking our disciple, you want to come with us? The Bible says, you went back to fishing. Some drama, dramatic events took place there. And Jesus also asked him the three questions, do you love me more than anything? The Bible says, on the day of Pentecost, when he was standing along with other disciples, boldly preaching about Christ, with his one preaching, 3,000 people got saved. Hallelujah. God's word became fulfilled in his life. Jesus said to Simon, you are Simon, son of John, but you will be Peter. You are Cephas. Who, are, who is Cephas? Who is Peter? Peter is someone who will stand boldly in that upper room and he will preach about Jesus Christ and at this one preaching itself thousands of people will be saved mighty miracles will follow after his preaching I mean what about Jesus prophesied over Simon's life that he will become a Peter that was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost in the upper room now Peter the apostle stood with the other disciples and he preached 3,000 people got saved his tongue became the net that draw many people to the kingdom of God. He became the fisher of man. I mean, earlier he knew how to cast the net, to cast the fish, but now the net is here in the tongue. Hallelujah. Oh, God made his tongue as a net to attract, net to, net to attract and draw many people into the kingdom, into the kingdom. I want to say God has a mighty project on you. God has a higher call on you. Are we ready to become the person God wants you to be? Hallelujah. They will say you cannot become that person. You are not eligible for that. See this and that. See where you come from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may say that you are uneducated. You are not eligible for that and this. Many, many excuses they will not bring in your mind. But you will say, you will say it's not because of my eligibility, it's not because of my background, it's not because of my position, it's not because of my money, it's not because I am so many years in the church, but Jesus promised me I'm not becoming an apostle, I'm not becoming so and so person, rather Jesus is making me the person that he called me to be. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If God has a call on your life, he is responsible for that call. When you follow him, he will make you the person he called you to be. Hallelujah. 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 Your people may stand against. Situations may not be favorable, but God's hand is still powerful. Yeah. Hallelujah. No one there to support, no one there to lift you up, no one there to encourage, no one there to give you opportunities, no one there to motivate, no one there to appreciate, especially if you have some giftings or calling, don't expect anyone's appreciation, hallelujah, don't expect anyone's motivation, hallelujah, the people whom you expect may not motivate you, nothing, 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 hallelujah, but you know one thing, is you know one thing, you are becoming someone whom God wants you to be, Hallelujah. It's not because of people's representation, people's appreciation, people's motivation. It is because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's because of the call of God. Hallelujah. The people who are supposed to encourage, may discourage, but thank God for that. The people supposed to motivate, they will try to bring you down. Oh, God still I thank you because I trust on you. I trust in you. I am who I am because Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be the person God wants you to be. Hallelujah. God has a Peter call. And there will be different kinds of challenges. But God's hand is powerful to help you out. And everyone stand up in the presence of God. You don't pray to God. Ask God, touch my life in a new way. Father, many times the Simon in me is waging war against the Peter of me. The Peter belongs to God, Simon belongs to me. Hallelujah. 
But God's call is Peter in me. Only Peter can do amazing things. Only Peter can preach. Only Peter can save souls. Only Peter can heal the sick. Hallelujah. Only Peter can be the poster. But the Simon and me always wanted to go back. Think lower level, fleshly level. The Simon and me. The wrong character in me. The wrong lifestyle in me. The fleshly nature in me. The fear in me. The human ideas in me. Hallelujah is always fighting against the godly project Peter in me. Hallelujah. Devil doesn't want that Peter to be revealed in me. Hallelujah. But God said I will be a Peter. God said I will be a Peter. Hallelujah. If God has called you to be a prophet. If God has called you to be an evangelist. If God has called you to be a mighty vessel in every, I mean, different offices in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Many times uh, that normal identity in you, the ordinary identity in you, the Simon in you will try to fight against you. But today I believe, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. By your grace, by your anointing, I'm going to be victorious over Simon. To become a painter of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm going to be victorious over every every unnecessary bad nature to be the person God wants me to be. That's my life, Lord. As never before. Let's all stand up together in the presence of God. <laughs> and ask God. Touch you in a very specific way. Touch my life. Touch my life. I need your touch once again. Holy Lord. Sing with me. Touch my life. Touch my life. I need you touch once again. Holy Lord, flow through me. Flow through me. I need you touch once again. Holy Lord. I want everyone to sing together. Touch my life, Lord. Touch my life. Touch my life. I need your touch once again. Holy Lord. Sing with me together loudly. Touch my life. Come on. Touch my life. One more time. Touch my life, touch my life, touch my life, touch my life. I need your touch once again, Holy Lord. Father, we thank you that your presence is here. Hallelujah. If you feel in your life that God has the highest call on your life, many times becoming a failure, unable to move on, the Simon in you is really, is really becoming big in you. Not allowing you to become the Peter, you to become the person God wants you to be. Your ministry is affected. Hallelujah. Christian life is affected. Many areas you are unable to proceed, prosper presence of God. But today I believe there is a breakthrough. The hand of the Lord is going to move in a mighty manner in your life. Maybe you are sick in your body and you call yourself good for nothing. But the Lord says, uh, my call is still active in your life. Hallelujah. My hand is powerful to bring changes, restoration, redemption in your life. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe that your God is a great and good God. A God is an amazing God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Father, I thank you for the call upon your life. I thank you, Lord, for the call upon my life. I want to be the person. These days, whatever problem I face, situations I face, circumstances I face, fight, and every issues that I face in my life, Lord, I believe your hand is powerful to bring me out of the trouble. The Simon in me will not be victorious. God will bring out the Peter in me. God will bring out the Peter in me. I will be the Peter as God's son. I will be the safest. I will be the post. I will be that very person God I mean, called me to be. I will be that anointed personality. I will be the fearless Peter. I will be the person doing wonders and miracles. Oh, Simon, oh, devil, you don't want me to be the Peter. But the Lord says, I will be the Peter. I will be the man of God. I will be the anointed personality. I will be the one who will be used by God. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Do something new in my life. Oh, Lord. do something new in my life. Yes, Lord. Something new in my life. There's something new in my life. Oh, Lord, when these songs are singing here, those who want to be prayed for, quickly, I just want to call you quickly, please come here. just want to pray for you, come here. Whatever problem, whatever issues, whatever situation you're going through,